telling the truth during times of universal deceit is a revolutionary act. Well, welcome to the counter-revolution. We have gone from a constitutional republic into a fascist system that my good friend Aaron Russo talked about so many years ago. And now it's time for a counter-revolution to bring us back to the principles that our forefathers found worth dying for. Hey friends, welcome back. Thanks so much for pushing play. I have the one and only David Morgan back on the line. David, how are you, sir? Well, I'm doing well under the circumstances, Sean. Thanks for having me. I gotta tell you, man, it just feels like the cartel is throwing everything and the kitchen sink at us, and it's getting so disgusting, and people are, are feeling so demoralized for having done the right thing, right, by trying to protect themselves against economic collapse and hyperinflation by buying precious metals, that it's starting to feel like, David, that these people in control, this cartel, is so hell-bent on quote-unquote demonetizing silver, right, making it appear worthless, that even those of us that know the true history and value of physical precious metals, even we're getting disgusted because when you buy at 15, you think it can't get any lower, and now we're staring at the face of 14, 13. I mean, they could just take it to zero, David, and the only thing I think saving us is other nation states, other cultures that do appreciate physical precious metals. If it weren't for India, if it weren't for China, if it weren't for Russia, if it weren't for these other nations that actually care about precious metals, I'd feel like, well, the fix is in and we're never going to beat these bankers. Uh, how are you weathering the storm? Well, personally, I'm doing okay because I've been through it before. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, the guy that's been investing and trading in silver for as long as I have, I pretty much have ice water in my veins. Not to say it hasn't gotten to me and I'll just, you know, reiterate a little of what you said and add on to it. First of all, if you go back to just very recent history and you looked at what I estimated conservatively at about a 5 million ounce backlog, we started to see the silver price finally reflect this silver shortage in the retail market. And we moved up into the 16 level. And once that was satisfied and the premiums came back down and were normalized, we saw the price start to back off, which I expected to see, but not, you know, under the 15 level, not to this 14, 17 print that we're seeing as we're doing the interview. So it is very disheartening. What I do know are some facts. One is I love to stay with the facts. The facts are that one, no manipulation has lasted forever. And again, I, it bears repeating and probably people that have listened to me are tired of hearing me say it, but it is also a fact that the paper price on gold and silver in no way reflects the true tightness in the market. Uh, if you look at the gold side for a moment, and even the World Gold Council, which is not that friendly to gold, believe it or not, stated that there was pretty hefty gold demand in uh, the last reporting period on an annual basis. And yet, we see these prices struggling into a new low territory, perhaps testing the new barrel Rubini uh, price of $1,000 an ounce in 2015. This makes absolutely no sense. I mean, just a third grader knows that supply and demand has some value in a true free marketplace. And yet we see this derivative structure, or this paper paradigm, as I like to refer to it, controlling these markets, especially the metals, but all these markets are controlled. If you control the interest rate of money, if you control the value of money, then you basically control all markets. And the reason I say that with authority is because it's true. If you're able to put money and determine the interest rates at will, then the free market has no place to value the most important commodity in economics, and that is what is the time value of money going forward. We go through that in the book, The Silver Manifesto. I don't want to go in a big intellectual discussion about it. It's very basic. Anyone can understand it. And the point being is that the dollar looks great right now compared to what? Compared to all the other losing currencies on the globe. The only thing that's ever stood the test of time are metals that are money outside the matrix. And that can't be taken away, Sean. You know it, I know it, and our listeners know it. So regardless of how you're feeling at the moment, stand true to yourself knowing that those elements, those physical commodities, those pieces of money, and they always have been regarded as money, stand true, and they are alone and of themselves valuable. So... Price is price, value is value. Try to do a paradigm shift on yourself. I have to do this to myself once in a while and say, look, 
I've got more silver now than when I started back in the, you know, 99. I mean, I started when I was a kid, really. But what I mean is when I started the website in the public domain till now. And I feel it's more imperative on us, meaning, you know, the Sean's, the David's, the Greg's, all these people that are out there that are still speaking from the head and the heart and telling the truth, knowing that uh, YouTube and some of the other powers that be were pretty friendly to the alternative media are now starting to put the screws down on us for doing what? Telling the truth. As George Orwell says, says telling the truth during times of universal deceit is a revolutionary act. Well, welcome to the counter-revolution. We have gone from a constitutional republic into a fascist system that my good friend Aaron Russo talked about so many years ago. And now it's time for a counter-revolution to bring us back to the principles that our forefathers found worth dying for. So end of soapbox, I had to get that out. We are getting closer to the end day by day, and the medals will survive. Yeah, thanks for that, man. You've got a fire in your belly today. I like that because that's how I feel too. And we know that there are no free markets at this point. All markets are being uh, manipulated uh, by the Fed. But one thing that we also know is true, which Mike Maloney has pointed out and Jeff Nielsen uh, and Maloney just pointed it out again in his new Hidden Secrets of Money 6. But my friend Jeff Nielsen pointed it out in a recent interview is that the Fed has already hyperinflated the dollar. If you just look at the Fed monetary base, you can see a hyperinflationary chart that uh, proves that they've already hyperinflated the dollar, David. So even though they uh, manipulate precious metals endlessly and it looks like they could take silver to zero in the paper, in the paper market, uh, not literally, but they could certainly take it down back below 10. The fact is they've already hyperinflated the dollar, haven't they? Absolutely. I like to add on to that and look at it a different way. As you know, we have our mastermind group, which sort of, uh, oh, let's say the people that are kind of obsessed about this market like I am and, and money in general, but particularly the financial markets and the honest money movement and how they interplay. And I had Keith Weiner on, uh, on that mastermind fairly recently, and he pointed out something which emphasizes the hyperinflation. So let's just do, I'm going to do two things. I'm just going to go give a quick example, and then I'm going to give his example. And obviously, I'm giving him credit for this. So if you go back in time and you go when, you know, I'm in my 60s now, but you go back when I was like in my 30s, you could, you know, if you've been a good uh, steward of your own uh, finances, you might come out with, let's just make up a number, uh, $350,000. And you could pretty easily get 10% on that. So you could get $35,000. Remember, I'm talking... Uh, taking back to the past here and that would be not touching your principal and you would earn interest and you would basically have a pretty good lifestyle in those days on that amount of income okay so now let's go to present day with the ZERP program zero interest rate policy now what do you have now well as Keith pointed out hyperinflation because why would I say that it's obvious because you would have to have something Sean like 40 million dollars in bonds at the at the 30 year interest rate to get something like $35,000 in interest which you, you know is pretty low i mean but you could probably survive on it today mm -hmm. so what that means is you would have to have such a huge amount of cash saved in order to live off the interest it proves you have hyperinflation in other words you'd have to have 40 million, 50 million, 60 million, 70 million at interest just to, you know, basically eke out a pretty, you know, average lifestyle in America. That's a hyperinflation. And I, I commend Keith for bringing that to my attention because I hadn't thought of it in that way and how relevant it is, which goes all the way back to the beginning of the interview where I stressed what's in the Silver Manifesto, which is the interest rate on money itself, which is imperative to a free market paradigm, which we are not living in. We're living in this control mechanism. And the only way I know for the average person to escape it is to get out of the matrix, and that means physical elements in your hand, known as money for thousands of years. Name one currency that's gone on more than 100 years. There isn't even a dollar has certainly uh, met a, <clears throat> had been through many changes, even from the time I was a kid. I mean, when I was a kid, it was a silver certificate. And then, of course, uh, I think one of the greatest ever, John Fitzgerald Kennedy with uh, 
the executive order is 101001 or something like that. I'm sorry, but it's the executive order. Basically, take the Federal Reserve Board off of the issuance of money and put the United States Treasury as the issuer of money. And this is a true fact. I have some uh, dollar or some fives to prove it, but it's easily proven. And then, of course, one of the first things that happened after the assassination is Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the first executive order of his presidency to null and void that executive order of Kennedy's and put us back on the Federal Reserve System. So certainly, if you don't think money is power, you're not thinking very far. Yeah, that's right. Well, I want to ask you this, too, about uh, our friend Mike Maloney, who has been very consistent in saying, first we will see deflation, then a helicopter drop, then hyperinflation. He's been saying that now consistently for several years. And you know, we're seeing the deflation and the helicopter drop that I think he's referring to is not QE1 or QE2. It's coming and it will be an overreaction from the Fed because of massive deflation in the system that the big helicopter drop still lies ahead. So despite that Fed monetary base chart that we're looking at that already shows hyperinflation of the currency, the worst may be yet to come, David. Be before this thing gets better, they're going to even throw trillions and trillions and trillions of more funny money at the system in an effort to prop it up. And then hyperinflation absolutely can't be stopped. Do you agree? Absolutely. And one thing that I've done my best, but you know, perhaps I can do better at emphasizing is the extra upside down pyramid. You see that all over the net now. And in fact, I had a great discussion about it with uh, Jay Taylor well over a decade ago. And this is his work, not mine, but John Exter showed very clearly that as the run to liquidity begins, the, the, the last point before the run to gold starts is a run to the U.S. dollar. And that's what we're seeing, as we said earlier, you know, the dollar is the strongest thing out there compared to what? All the other fiat currencies. Mm -hmm. But that's what you'll see because a dollar bill, physical dollar bill in your hand is the most liquid thing you can have. If you're worried about a bank run or a bank failure or being Cyprus or being uh, Argentinized, that's my word, where, you know, you can only, or, or Greek, or uh, like the Greeks, where you can only get so much out of an ATM, and I've tried to help people on that on the, you know, our free mailing list and, and wake them up. All these things could take place. So what you would do is you take, you know, dollars. Now, 99% of the per of the population, even on a global basis, because the dollar is ubiquitous, think that the best thing they can have is a U.S. dollar, and they don't think beyond that. But the best and smartest know there is something well beyond the dollar, because when the dollar fails, where do you go? And that's the run to gold. And when the run to gold starts in a significant way, that's when you're going to see this paper paradigm derivatives monster blow up. And then you're going to find out, just like in the movie Rollover that I talked about so many years ago, take place on a real basis. And that means that people that don't have it may not get it. Uh, there may be people that will say, I'm not willing to trade. And so I want to continue on just a bit more, Sean. The cry all the way up during the Weimar Republic was, believe it or not, the cry all the way up was, there's not enough money. Can you imagine that? Though during that entire hyperinflation, until the very end, it was there's not enough money. So the banks obviously uh, accommodated, you know, and they didn't think they were doing anything wrong. In fact, in the beginning, everyone cheered it. Oh, prosperity and things are moving and goods are transferring and we're paying back this war debt and we're happy. And it kept going with that kind of an attitude for quite some time and then it got to the point where people recognized it for what it was and it was just a printing press fiasco that was going to end in ruin life insurance policies that had value became worthless a postage stamp became what you used to pay for a block of buildings in a downtown area that type of thing are we going to go to that type of hyperinflation and i say we will not i think we will go into enough of one to see a run to gold that's going to make the last run to gold throughout all of recorded history look like a warm a parade because this time it's a global basis china and russia and india particularly have put away massive amounts of gold and it's questionable as to how much the united states actually has in physical gold that's unencumbered but regardless i think when the uh, chips fall where they may once that this 
fraudulent system starts coming to an end, we're going to see, again, as Greg Hunter has said, there'll be people that have it and there'll be people that don't have it. And there may be people that are unwilling to trade it uh, for fiat. They may trade it for land or uh, some other tangible asset or a business or something like that. Now, that's the extreme view. I want to state that. I'm stating it for emphasis because I want people to think. I want critical thinking to take place on why you need some precious metals. Does this mean, oh, David's right and I need to you know, cash out everything and put it in a physical metal? Absolutely not. Nature preaches balance. You need a balanced attitude toward life. You need a balanced objective in your portfolio. But to neglect precious metals, which is 99% of the population that has saved something, is the biggest mistake that's ever going to be made. And you know what? Once the ship has sunk, everyone knows how it might have been saved. What I mean by that is once the run to gold starts, you may not get in, and once it ends, people will say, my goodness, why didn't anyone tell us that we should have precious metals as a money of last resort? Why didn't someone stand up and tell us this? Well, of course, Sean, you have, I have, Mike Maloney has, many of us have. It just hasn't been broadcast from the mainstream media. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, those same people will wonder what happened to the gold in Fort Knox. You sort of made reference to that. We don't really know how much gold is backing up the U.S. dollar at this point. There hasn't been an audit of Fort Knox since the 50s. Um, you also mentioned uh, 0% interest rates, and uh, that leads me to the topic of negative interest rates, bail-ins, uh, Social Security cuts are probably on the horizon in the near term. Ultimately, austerity may be coming to this nation. And it reminds me of the Illinois pension problems. It reminds me of what's going on. Things are so bad, as you probably know, David, in Illinois, that lottery winners are being given IOUs. So they can't even pay their lottery winners the fiat that they have coming. Instead, they're going to get IOUs. And that, I think, is a wonderful metaphor for the America of 2015, from Illinois to D.C., it's I.O.U. America. Well said. There used to be an adage out there that as GM goes, so goes America. I think that still holds. General Motors is basically propped up by this fiat system. Detroit is, anyone that does a cursory look at Detroit realizes just in what kind of position they are in, which is very, very, very dire. And so what you're talking about is a foretaste of not uh, of that spreading throughout the entire system. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is sad because the principles that made this nation great have been usurped by the power structure for their own benefit and the detriment of everybody that runs the system, which is who is on the hook for these massive deficits? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the U.S. taxpayer. That's who. Are you getting your value out of these people? Well, think well, about certainly it. not. Well, think about it, too, because, you know, that whole IOU metaphor, if you really flush that out, you think about Social Security. The entire thing is really unfunded, and it's paid on the backs of current workers to pay retired workers. It's an IOU system. The dollar itself is an IOU system, right? Everything printed into existence is beholden to debt to the Federal Reserve and the funny money banksters, the lottery winners in Illinois being given IOUs, whereas physical gold and silver despite it being decimated in the paper markets in terms of price, there is no IOU. If you have physical silver and physical gold, it's yours. It's actual wealth in your pocket. It's tangible wealth. Now, of course, these guys are going to manipulate it, manipulate it, manipulate it because they want to try to save their fiat funny money. But at the end of the day, David, when you have buyers like China and Russia in Saudi Arabia, in India, in nation states that are hoarding physical precious metals. I mean, India's on track this year, I think, to take down 33 to 40% of physical silver supply globally. Um, that is the ultimate game changer, right? The Fed, I guess my point is, and I'm sorry for the rant, but I guess my point is, is the Fed, the men behind the curtain, as we've said so many times before, have been revealed on the global stage, right? It's not just you and I having this conversation. This is happening in boardrooms around the world. I mean, it, wasn't it just Overstock.com? That CEO said, we're planning for a calamity by, by you know, we purchased physical gold so that we can pay our employees. We've purchased food stores for when the collapse comes. So this isn't just you and I, this is happening across the country and across the world. People are having this very conversation. Absolutely, I used to close out most of my videos with be real, get real, buy real. And that's where we're going, Sean, as you stated. We're going to a place where it's going to be a very easy balance sheet, meaning what do you really have and what do you 
what do you have when what do you owe? And you may owe a lot of fiat because you're in debt. And what do you really have? Maybe something much different than you think you have now. Meaning you could have like a life insurance policy that basically you can't get access to or, you know, bank accounts, probably a better example where, oh, yeah, your money's still there. But like in Argentina, you're only allowed to get $300 a month out of it or a week or something along those lines. So we're going to that place where you need to know, you need to know what you really have. And if you have everything in their paradigm, you really better think that clearly through on what it means to you. Because believe it or not, they're not there to help you. You're there to help you. And it shows like you're, Sean, that gives people the at least the idea that they need to make a move. If you haven't made a move yet, I highly recommend you start immediately. I don't like the hard sell and I don't like the immediacy type of uh, – sell, you know, you only have two days to get this or it's gone forever. I don't really like that, but I'm doing it. Why? Because I think we are as so close. <clears throat> and the old adage, I'd rather be six months too early than one minute too late is something to think about because we are at a place where uh, we saw recently, Sean, where to get retail silver product wasn't that easy. Yes, it only lasted four to six weeks. I get that. However, the next time it may not be that. It may be where, as I said earlier, you either have it or you don't or you're willing to pay a huge premium. And sure, there will always be someone trading silver for fiat or gold for fiat. That's at the low level, and that's fine. I mean, I'm just a regular person like anybody else. But on a massive scale, where Central Fund of Canada or the PSLV or the Zurich Continental Bank or one of these large hedge funds comes in and wants to buy a wimpy, 200, excuse me, 20 million ounces of silver, which is a very small amount relative to the annual mine supply. And they're saying, then they get a feedback from the broker dealers saying, sorry, we can't do that large in order. Well, how about 10 million? Oh, maybe, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So we're reaching that point. And I'm stressing it again because that point, I think, is coming sooner than many people believe. Yeah, and I did recall that correctly. It's the Overstock CEO, Patrick Byrne. Uh, who came out publicly and said, look, we're holding three months of food and $10 million in physical gold for employees in preparation for the next collapse. Because as you've said, David, in this interview, and I completely agree, the next collapse is coming and it's going to be far worse than what happened in 2008 because you know, the Federal Reserve did what they wanted to do and they printed all this funny money into existence and they gave it to their banker buddies. At some point, the chicken's going to come home to roost and the dollar will not be king for very much longer, certainly not for another 50 years. Uh, okay, before I let you go, a couple more things. Uh, this is from a reader and a contributor, a buddy of mine named Mark, who asks, at what point, okay, and now he's talking about spot price plus premium as it, as it pertains to silver. Um, and I'm going to summarize real quick what he's trying to say. At what point does it not make sense to buy silver at say 14 when there's a three dollar or four dollar premium to get a silver eagle uh, because percentage wise you know now you're paying what 15 to 30 percent on top of your uh, on top of the spot at what point does it become cost prohibitive to buy physical precious metals because clearly that premium uh, as a percentage of the overall cost is much lower when silver was at 25 and you're paying a three dollar premium uh what do you say about that i guess i feel this pain i mean it's nice to buy, be able to buy silver at 14 but we're really not getting it at 14 we're paying 16 to 18 depending on premium well that's a great question the only way to answer it correctly is it's an individual case-by-case -case basis yeah. so in his case where he's probably going to be in a situation of where he will be striving to get 100 ounces of silver as an example uh ask for that you know ask in other words you know birthdays anniversaries christmas gifts etc you know i don't want uh, a trinket i don't want this i want silver you know so that's one way the other way is uh, you know, is that premium worth it to you? Which I'm going to elongate this answer, Sean. It's welcome to the world of silver. And why do I say that? Because in most areas of the world, ex the U.S. and Canada, there's a VAT on silver. There's a value-added tax of about 17% in most jurisdictions. Right. Why is that? Well, I'm going to leave that as an open question. Why don't you think about why Germany, uh, England, uh, many of the European countries have a value-added tax on silver, but not on gold. Something to consider. So I'll leave that as an open question. So what I say is, look, if 
having a half a loaf of bread is better than none. If I had to pay in extreme conditions uh, more than I might feel comfortable uh, from somebody middling the gold uh, or a loaf of bread, rather, I would have to make the determination, is it worth it or not? My, my taste would, or my guess would be yes, mm -hmm. to get some. Additional, let's go to where we are right now. Right now, we're sub $15 silver, as we're doing in the interview. And the all-in sustaining cost for every silver mine in the world I can think of, and I'll take my numbers over anybody. Yes, I'm very close to what Steve Rocco's numbers are. He and I are friends. Believe me, I'm pretty tuned in to most of these guys. And believe me, it's not a one-man show here. I've got two guys, actually three that work for me, and you know, guys like Steve I stay connected to. The point being is that we're at a point now where silver – is under the cost of production for all and sustaining costs on every mine I can think of except one, which is Tahoe Resources. I'll give you that one. You can go look it up. That's at $50 oil. If you go back in time or forward in time and you're looking at $70 to $100 oil, your all in sustaining costs at those same mines will be about $20 to $22 an ounce. So I don't know what your thoughts on the oil markets are. If you read, uh, again, Steve St. Angelo or Steve Rocco, uh, at his website and get into his work, he makes a very strong case that oil prices are not going to stay at these levels forever. And if you go back to what Mike Maloney says about the hyperinflation, the two most important commodities in the world are money and energy. Mm -hmm. And energy, for the most part, means oil. Certainly natural gas and you know solar and all that stuff, but for the most part, it means oil. So I would say yes. You know, if you've got to ask, hey. You know, do I or don't I buy? You know in your heart of hearts. You don't need to make it an intellectual question. You need, need to make it, and I'm not a super feely guy, but I've got emotions. Obviously, anyone that's met me real or heard me knows I have passion. And why? Because I think we, the people, need to wake up, and at some point we may be asked to stand up. It's not an intellectual exercise where we do these interviews where it's entertainment about the coming crisis. We're in it. And we need to make a decision ahead of time. Chance favors the prepared mind. Prepare yourself for what's coming and ask yourself some questions. If such and such happens, what will be my stance? It sounds good listening to David and Sean on the internet. But if it really happens, what can you do personally to protect yourself, protect your family, and stand up for what you know is right? Because we're not going to get to the other side where we need to be if everybody caves in. And for the most part, just having precious metals is a step, but it's a step in a total process. And I want to emphasize that because a lot of people think, unfortunately, that money alone is going to save them that we are facing is not a money only problem that's a symptom the problem is the corruption at the top levels in this what i very seldom say satanic monopoly that is engulfed the entire globe and if i might just go on i know we're going over time sean but when you did your latest one that i watched about uh, specter is that how you say it with yeah. the james bond movie yeah that's right I thought, you know, that's right on. I think that's great because people, you know, love movies. I use it as about the only vice that I have. You want to call it a vice. It's the only way I can relax these days. I'm pretty high strung, as most people know. Mm -hmm. And I contrasted that to another movie, Sean, and that was this Martian movie, which I watched. And I left that movie with a very profound impact on myself personally. And that was that they made such an emphasis of saving this one man's life and how valuable life is to all of us. And I thought, what hypocrites, because we are out there blasting and killing people indiscriminately all the time and have done so for a very long time to quote Chris Dwayne, you know, it's the death and debt paradigm that we've been living in for so long. And I thought how interesting that the mainstream media, this theater shows this picture of what we all like to believe, that we're all sacred in some way, that we all have value just by being human. And they emphasize that over and over again when the reality of how we value life has very little to do with that movie and that's that's what i got out of so i just thought about that before the interview last night i'm you know thought gosh what is the most important thing i can tell people and you know i don't know what it is but you know i'm a pretty passionate guy I speak from the heart i speak from the head i speak the best of my ability to people that are finally getting it and sean i do think we are turning i do think the fourth turning is coming i think that the grays um such as myself that owe it to the younger generations, 
uh, are going to do what we need to do, which is stand fast in this uh, in this hurricane of disruption that's taking place on so many levels. I just want to add on to you, Sean, because you have ventured into areas that I really don't care to go to, but are imperative for people to understand. Some of those are the geoengineering problem that you have done on your show to wake people up to the reality of that paradigm. What's going on in Fukushima, which may be an extinction level event, and you hear about zero about it on the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. The monetary problem, I'll take you know my fair share of the credit for that because that's where I spent most of my time and energy in my entire life to bring forward and I'm the most comfortable. But I want to get out of my comfort zone today, Sean, because it's people like you that take a broader view that's imperative that people understand, again, coming back to the premise that money alone is not going to save you. Not when the planet's dying, not when the food stores are based on this genetically modified situation where you see these morbidly obese people. Why do they eat so much? Because they're not getting the nutrition. That's why. Their body's still hungry. They're not getting what they need. So we need to get back to basics, Sean. When we go to the other side of the reset, there is going to be, in my view, a very big spiritual reawakening where we get back to value. And it's not necessarily value value in the money supply, which of course I think will take place. It's how we value ourselves as human beings and what's the most important thing. You know what? It's not Facebook. It's the antithesis of Facebook. It's heart to heart, hand to hand, eye to eye, my word is my bond kind of value. We've lost that, Sean. It's time we get it back. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate you mentioning that. And, uh, you know, the uh, the Matt Damon movie, The Martian, uh, I think is the movie you're referring to. And uh, yeah, I totally see your point. Uh, I wish humanity would work together on behalf of all of us. And, and instead, what we see is, and again, credit to you for labeling them satanic, because I think at the at the very tippy top, you've got this cabal that is eating up all the money on the planet for military warfare. At least in this country, more than 50 cents of every dollar collected goes to the Pentagon. Well, when is enough is enough, right? We already spend more than the next eight countries combined. I mean, this beast is insatiable. And uh, I really appreciate you getting out of the box to say that and to talk about those things, David, because it shows your courage. And, and I really appreciate all the work that you do. Um, there's another guy out there doing terrific uh, research in the silver space whose work I appreciate. We post his work, too, over at uh, SGT Report, and that's Charles Savoy. Uh, I I just you know want to give a nod out to Charles. He doesn't get enough credit. He doesn't. His name isn't spoken enough. I, he doesn't do interviews, or at least he hasn't yet. And um, he does this Silver Squelcher series, which I think is so powerful. Uh, it's it's almost difficult to read because it's so vast. Uh, but he has explained really maybe better than most that. The silver conspiracy and the conspiracy to suppress silver and really demonetize it has been a decades and in fact maybe longer than decades, centuries long uh, plan a conspiracy uh, involving the pilgrims and many other secret societies and uh, if you guys want to learn the truth about how precious silver is in physical form start to get in tune with the silver squelcher series it'll take you forever to read it but uh, we post all of those over at SGT report and David I think you post his work too don't you at the Morgan report absolutely uh, the silver dash investor.com all of his work is available for free and he came to me initially, and we started with his work way back when I started the website. And it's still all available. Uh, he now has his own website and posts his own work there. And, of course, we carry it on the Morgan Report as well. Anybody that's on our free email list, and let me emphasize the word free, our free email list gets anything that he writes in our weekly updates and also uh, any interviews that I do like this. So certainly you might consider doing that. And thank you for mentioning him. He certainly probably the most underrated yet underknown, I shouldn't say underrated, high, he should be very highly rated, probably the best researcher, certainly superior to me, as far as the history of silver as a monetary metal going back centuries and how it's been suppressed all the way up and why. And so if you really want an education, uh, certainly dig into his work. It is vast, it is deep, and it does take time. So it's not for uh, people looking for a cursory uh, ADD type of solution, uh, two-minute video that explains the whole world to you. It's not that type of work. It's very deep. However, it's something that someone out there or few need to really dive into because myself, like you know, Harry Brown, be one of my mentors, uh, Jerome Smith, uh, some of these people that are you know, gone – 
uh, I'm carrying the message, you know, I'm a messenger, you know, I have my own delivery, but basically the message is the same throughout history. Charlie's the same way, but somebody needs to get into that side of things uh, to be able to carry it forward because it's very important that we not lose sight of the actual real history that is so important to understand what the future may bring to us. Yeah, yeah, the hidden history is just so stunning. It makes me realize that, uh, you know, I've just scratched the surface of trying to get to the heart of the matter. And uh, I'm glad that you did mention that as it relates to Spectre, the global group behind the scenes that it really usurps governments and uh, operates behind the scenes. Uh, the Illuminati, I guess, is what many would refer to them as being. But uh, I digress. I, I just want to support you, David. Uh, and uh, guys, if you want to support David, Visit silver-investor.com. You can sign up for his free email updates and get 30 days full member access absolutely for free. And uh, another way to support David would be to buy his terrific book, The Silver Manifesto. Uh, you can click through on the ad at his site there, silverinvestor.com, and get a copy of The Silver Manifesto. Uh, and uh, David, I guess that pretty much sums it up. Did I miss anything? No, thank you. You caught me at a great time. I am a morning person. I have the most energy, and I feel very... Uh, Oh, zesty today, I guess, because uh, you're such a great interviewer and we have a lot in common. And I've seen you grow, uh, you know, your site, your following, and you're seeking the truth and remaining open minded. And I just will add on slightly more that uh, when I spoke at the New Orleans conference, uh, only for the second time, which, you know, Greenspan and uh, Secretary of Defense has been down there. I mean, this is really a high end show. Yeah, I got to meet Rory uh, personally. Okay. And Rory, you know, was basically through you. So you are doing something important, but more importantly, it's it's starting to spread. That's the point I want to make. You know, one man with a voice in the wilderness is one man with a voice in the wilderness. But two, three, four, hear it, it starts to spread. So to emphasize and close out on a positive note, the word is getting further and further uh, to the populace. And we may hit that tipping point. And maybe we'll hit that tipping point before uh, things unravel further. Oh, good. Yeah, I hope so. And thank you so much for your kind words. That really tickles me and makes me feel really good. I appreciate that. It's nice of you to say those things. And, uh, you know, as I also like to say, we're all in this mess together. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's the banksters versus humanity. And I just hope humanity can figure out a way to pull this thing out in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, guys, our guest has been David Morgan from Silver-Investor.com, home of the Morgan Report, a good friend to SGT Report, a good friend to all of us, uh, you know, who fight on behalf of humanity. David, thank you, sir. Well, my pleasure. Thank you, Sean. All right. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As you know, we really appreciate your support at SGTReport.com, TheLibertyMill.com, and ThePhaser.com. Real news 24-7. God bless. Have a great week.